Welcome to the video lecture of chapter 2 Why should you start a site business? This DNA diagram will make more sense for you at the end of today's lecture There are four accounting concepts as always The connection between wealth and happiness DNA Desires, needs, assets Identifying a site business Accounting for entrepreneurs Wealth and happiness Why do people seek a good job? See everybody wants a good job You want a good job Particularly those of you who are going to graduate end of the semester Why do you want a good job? See a good job What is a good job? A good job is respected by society And it pays well Many times it is respected because it pays well See, beneath this belief systems Is that if we have money We can buy the things we desire So we seek a good job because it will pay well Society will respect that job But more importantly with the money that I'll get from that job I can buy the things that we desire Whatever that may be It may be a house, a vehicle and Later on your children's education And happiness results when desires are fulfilled So if you think about what is happiness You have a desire and, and it's like if you, you, you develop a desire, you're very hungry and when you eat a good meal, then you feel happy And uh, so when desires are fulfilled, you're happy, so you seek a good job because it will pay you well And, and with that money, you can uh, fulfill the desires and you will be happy Well, the, there's a problem in this thinking can money provide the lasting happiness that our hearts long for? See, there's no question money will give us immediate happiness right? But can it provide the lasting happiness? You know, we, we don't want just immediate happiness We want lasting happiness We want to come to the end of our life and look back and say Hey, that was, that was a good life and a good race that I ran well, the happiness that things provide are short-lived For example, you desire a house and you get a good job, you save some money and you build a good house Of course it's going to make you happy Until you find your cousin built a much bigger house in a much better location so now you're going to see, now you're going to develop a desire or a regret about your old house, your desire for a new house Same thing goes to a vehicle You buy your first car and you're so excited but later on you see, you know, somebody driving a fancy a vehicle and then you would want that so, so this happiness that money provides is short-lived But we want lifelong happiness so accordingly, there is very little scientific evidence to prove that money provides the lifelong happiness that our hearts long for. If anything, it seems to say the other way, right? That a lot of people take Michael Jackson, the way, you know, the age of around 50, that he ended his life in a tragic way. He had his glory days. And, uh, but scientific evidence is lacking that the, the rich people Lived a life of lifelong happiness So let's take a practice quiz You can stop the video, take this quiz Which of the following statements on wealth and happiness is not true? Money can buy many things we desire Is that true or not true? We are looking for something that's not true When desires are satisfied, we are happy Money will make us happy forever 
money cannot buy everything. Post the video and see what's the answer you come up with. The correct answer is, this is not true. Money will make us happy forever? No. You, you, you develop a health problem or, like I said, that you know, you see somebody else as something better than you and then, then your happiness is gone. Money obviously cannot buy everything, that's true. When desires are satisfied, we are happy, that's true. Money can buy many things we desire, that's true. But see, it's not true. Let's go to accounting concept two, DNA. What is this? So what is a better way to pursue lifelong happiness that our hearts really long for? My advice is pursue a career that is in line with your DNA and encounter lifelong happiness from three different sources. The D stands for desires, your deep down desires. See, if your career is in line with your deep down desires, you will be motivated, right? When Monday comes, you're not going to say, ah, oh, man, it's Monday again. I mean, you can't wait for Monday to go and start your work. And uh, Mark Twain said, uh, work is something you dislike doing. Play is something that you enjoy doing. Your job can be play particularly if it's in line with your desires. The end stands for needs. If your career meets a major need in the world, you'll feel good about what you do. So you, you know, it's like what, what I do that I feel good that I'm, I'm continuing to sow seeds of thoughts and seeds of desires into students' minds and hearts. I think I told you by my brother who is very successful doing his own business, you know, he offered me twice the salary that Syracuse University pays me because for him, why is my bright brother just, just making petty cash in his mind? I said, bro, I appreciate that, but I won't have the same sense of I'm making a difference in the next generation when I work for you and, and what am I going to do with more money? I'm, I'm very content in, in what I do. So you see, then the A stands for your assets. If your career utilizes your topmost assets, you'll be good at what you do compared to your competition. Right? So, uh, I, I give this example, suppose say my son and I, my oldest son is a good musician, we come to one of your houses and, and we see there is a grand piano and my son says, wow, Papa, this is, this is so expensive, it should be about $50,000 piano and how did they get this? And so I ask you, who plays this piano? And, Oh, no, our grandmother used to play and, you know, after she uh, is just collecting dust. Now, my son would say, what a waste of $50,000 if nobody is playing this. There are many guys like him who would pay you $50,000 and buy that piano. And then you take that $50,000 and buy a car or invest in a house. And so you see, it would be a pity to allow a $50,000 asset to collect dust. But you know who does that? You. There are many things you are excellent at. Right? And, but you are not necessarily utilizing it in your job because you developed asset in something and then you are employed in something else. Whereas if your career employs your $50,000 pen or whatever is your strongest asset, then you're going to be good. You know, if your job needs a $50,000 pen or, and you have one, so you're going to, be, uh, going to be much better than your competition. So you see, finally, if you pursue a career in line with your DNA, 
You're going to be happy for three reasons. You feel good. You're meeting a need in the world. You'll be motivated. You won't say, oh, I'm glad it's Friday. Man, you say, no, man, it's Friday already. I can't wait for Monday. And then you'll be happy because you'll be good at what you do throughout your life. And it's not just one thing. And you, you would see this is your niche. The DNA will change as life goes on, needs change. Your desires change. Let's say your desires get bigger. And then you would see this intersection will be bigger. Your assets may increase. Then it will get bigger. The needs may shift a bit. Needs may increase. So it, it is a journey. But you will always be fulfilled. Because happiness will come from three different sources. Then looking happiness from the money that a job gives you. And, and if you think about it. You're going to be working from, say, 25 to 65 for 40 years, from 8 to 4, 5 every day, the prime time of your life. Do you want to do that for the money that it pays you, or do you want to find fulfillment in your career itself? It's unfortunate that uh, I'm glad I didn't continue to be a civil engineer, because I quickly realized that I this is not that what I like to do. It's not the best fit for me in this world. Okay. Well, what is the scientific evidence for this? So, let me talk about lessons from good to great companies. It's a research done by a Stanford professor named Jim Collins. And what he did was he... Uh, all right, let me see why this is stuck. Okay, so what Jim Collins did, oops, no, what am I, sorry guys, get to that slide. Okay, so he, he found seven factors that help in breaking through from being good to becoming great. I'll explain what I mean by good to great. And hedgehog, hedgehog concept is one of the seven. It calls us to discover and master our niche than to be a jack of all trades. So here's what he did. So he identified, I think, 11 or 12 companies and if you think of x-axis as time and y-axis as financial performance, these were publicly traded companies. So some were great companies. Their stock price was, you know, pretty much it stays up there, very high. Some are, so those would be great companies. Then you have good companies, you know, decent prices. Then you have kind of bad companies, you know, just struggling to stay afloat. And he focused on companies that for good during the build-up period. Then something happened and they went to this great group. So they went from good to great. Right? And it's not just one lucky break for one month you went up. No, they remained high. So then he asked, what explains this breakthrough? So he, along with his staff of around 20 people, did many interviews, research about these 11 or 12 companies. They came up with seven factors. It's a good read. It's, it's many millions copies sold. It's translated into many languages. But I'm just going to focus. One of the reasons for that breakthrough happened was this hedgehog concept, which is similar to the DNA concept that I'm proposing. So it provide scientific evidence that this thing is true. So, so what is the hedgehog concept? So you see that there is a fox and this hedgehog, they live in a jungle and you see there's one big bulb here and there are many little bulbs here. So the story is, you see that it is taking a kind of a nasty look. Uh, at this hedgehog because one day he said, wow, how come I didn't 
noticed this little fellow, he would be a nice lunch one day. So he waited for that day where he is hungry and the poor hedgehog is coming without understanding there is danger waiting for him. And, and the fox just attacked him face front. You know what happened? Fox didn't expect the hedgehog to pull his body in and put the spikes out. And he was just bleeding all over his face. And he said, ah, oh, man, I, what was I thinking that? This, this guy's eyes are in front of him. You know, I know what to do. Let me attack him from the back next time. So the next time comes and the fox is now hungry and angry and is waiting to kill this fellow and eat him all up. So he allows him to go ahead and he's hiding and then he attacks him unexpectedly from the back. And this time, same thing happened. The, the fox was quick. I mean, the hedgehog was quick. So again, the hedgehog was quick. Even when the trouble came from the back, body in, spikes out, fox was bleeding again and now it is really mad. He said, okay, this thing is not as dumb as I thought, but I am fox. You know, I, I'm cunning and I know about gravity. This guy, this guy may not have seen the power of gravity, so I'm going to wait on top of a tree. And when this little fellow comes, I'm going to use gravity and my weight and just going to fall on him and I'm going to get him. Tries that. Again, this hedgehog, not aware of his danger, it comes and and the hedgehog just times it and just falls, bam, on. The, the fox falls on the hedgehog. What do you think happened? Same thing. Body in, spikes out. This time fox is bleeding all over its body. So the, the moral of the story is, this hedgehog knew in a dangerous jungle filled with lions and wolves and dogs and and tigers and this is the only thing it has going to protect itself is its spikes and it mastered the art of using spikes it used it developed its senses to detect trouble and it had a it's kind of like a danger sensor like impact sensor is a danger sensor it senses danger and it quickly uses spike and no lion no tiger no elephant no fox could get to him and he learned to be safe. Whereas the fox had many ideas but master of none. Right? And so he says these good to great companies also, they were good, they became great when they decided to focus on their niche. What, what is their spike? And then they mastered it. So apparently what happened was, see, see, imagine this whole screen is what the good companies were doing. And there came a time they said, look guys, let's, let's stop and ask some questions. The first question they said was, what are we deeply passionate about? Of all the things that we are doing, what are we deeply passionate about? And, and if we are not passionate about something, if there's something that we are selling that we wouldn't buy for our own homes, then let's not sell it to other people. So they let go of many things, seems like seriously, and they focused only on this, because this is what they had passion for. Then they ask the question, so that's our desire question. Second question they ask was, what can we be the best in the world at? We said, look, let us not be doing something that we don't have the assets for. There's somebody else, it may be a better location, it may be they have a patent, or it may be they got a good management team, or, or they are in a country where labor is cheap, and then we can't compete with them. And you know, if you're doing a labor intensive product, like, like how the car companies were doing, you know, they, they, the, the impact sensor was a labor intensive thing. And, 
you know, sooner or later, a country like Sri Lanka was able to do that better. So what these guys did was, look, if we don't have the assets, if we are not convinced that we can be the best in the world at, then let's go. So they say so now they came down from all this to this and now they focused only on the things that they that they had the passion and they are convinced they can be the best in the world. And they said, seriously, you let go of everything else? They say, yeah, seriously. That's when they went from good to great. And then they ask this third question, what drives our economic engine? They realize at the end of the day, you need financial resources, you need human resources. So they asked out of all this, which will bring us these resources and that became their spike, that became their niche. What I say is, meet needs in society, in your industries. Job will come, money will come, right? So, so that's where this idea of find a need in your industry, that's in line with your desires and assets. If that's your, that's your niche. And then you, you want to master it, you want to excel in it, then trying to do everything, you know, being a jack of all trades. Okay. So, he's saying, seeking a good job and typically, you know, people's thinking is which job will pay me more, right, versus that will give you a good salary and immediate happiness. Look for your DNA, find your DNA. Discover your DNA and master your DNA. Develop that thing and you will also go from a good career to a great career. You will have lifelong happiness. Okay, let's take a practice quiz. What is the point of the hedgehog story? Let's make sure we don't, <laughs> we don't lose the point with the details of the story. So what do you think is the point of the hedgehog story? You must keep trying. You must excel in many trades. Find and excel in your niche. Start your own business. Take a minute to see what's the point of the hedgehog story. Okay, the correct answer is find and excel in, in your niche. If you have a question, write it down. And finally, you will take one question and uh, you will email that to everybody uh, so others can see your questions as well. Okay, let's go to concept three, identifying a side business. So the way we would do the DNA analysis, you, you want to start this now itself, we'll further develop it in the class, list the top three assets of each of you, right? And so you say, hey, what, what am I really good at, right? I mean, it could be your academic field, hopefully many seniors, or we say seniors, your final years, third years, you know, if you're a civil engineer, you, you have developed civil engineering, even within that, you know, you may have developed expertise in your technical structure, whatever you consider as something that you really have, you're good at, right? Could be design, but it could be a natural talent, right? You're just good in public speaking, good in singing, and, uh, or it could be even sports in, in, you know, my, my oldest son is, is naturally a gifted singer, right? And could be life experiences. Now, many of you guys, I mean, you grew up in, in a time of war and not many people have that kind of life experience and that's an asset you have, right? Or it could be special networks, you're just connected. Uh, that's an asset if you know people. Right? So just list down, what do you think your, your strongest asset is? It's a bit unfortunate that we are good at knowing what's wrong about us because people are quick to point that out. Hey, you're a shy person, you know, you, you're not good looking and, and, but very few are willing to bring out 
the assets within us. So take time, you're not boasting, you're just, you're just recognizing you're good in. What is your $50,000 piano? So put one, two, three. Right? I mean, for me, I, I would have said that at this point of my career that I, I am tenured, I have a permanent job, I have no retirement age and I like what I do. Why would I retire? So that will be my, my number one, right? And so I have free time, make enough money that will allow me to travel. Second, I would say is I have, I have a house right on campus. Right? It's a 10 bedroom house. Is you cross the road, it's a campus gym. I mean, that's an asset, right? And um, so third is I would like to think I'm, I'm a motivational speaker that I can inspire people. And, you know, that's my asset. So just you write down what is what you consider as your assets and then maybe when we come to class you will also write down what you think are your partner's assets or you guys can have a phone chat or whatever and put that as well okay identify needs in your industry that you and your partner have the desire and the assets to meet so if you guys can do this before class, fine. If not, we will do this in the class. So you see, if you, are, if you are a civil engineer, you are kind of entering that civil engineering industry where many works, whether it's roads or bridges or structures are, are being built, right? There are many needs in that space. Right? So you, you want to see, you want to look at your assets and you want to look at your passions and see hey, what are some needs in the civil engineering industry that you and your partner have the desire and the assets to meet. Just note down, you know, at least three things that you think would, would, would work, that there is a need. Because you understand at the end of the day, you want to work for an organization that is meeting a particular need in that civil engineering space, right? But sometimes there is a gap that no organizations are meeting. And that may be within your DNA because that's a bigger need. It's an unmet need and you and your partner may have. Or it could be in an organization that is in, it could be the road development authority, but within the road development authority that there may be some needs that, that are going unmet and, and you and your partner may, may have a solution, may have an answer for it. So then RDA will be very happy to hire you because even before they give you the job, you, you, you're telling them, look, if you hire us, that here is what we bring to the table. We got the assets for this and we have thought about this. Right? Do you see that? So it's a good exercise for you to see, find the DNA, discover first that. And uh, that's why I asked you to pair according to your academic field. So write down about three, but then focus on the one that you think is the best fit. That, okay, we'll build it up in class. Then identify a side business in line with your DNA. So now what you need to do is you need to identify a single product or service that's in line with your DNA to meet that need. You're going to employ your topmost assets. And what is your solution? Is it, is it an impact sensor that you're going to produce or is it a service? And uh, so you got to kind of think through. So you're thinking, okay, this is the need and, and, and here are our assets and Maybe this is what we can do, right? And it, it takes some thinking. It's not easy, right? But it's not impossible. You keep thinking DNA, keep thinking DNA, and then you get that idea, yes. Yes, this, this would be nice if I can join RDA and if I can, you know, make this uh, contribution. 
Now later we will learn how to incorporate additional products or services, right? Because we want to learn the the accounting side of things. So if you if you have too many products in mind, then everything gets complicated. So start with a primary product, one single product, right? And then we will add uh, the second, third, and learn how to do that. But ensure that this product or service is in line with your DNA. Because right? that's the key. Keep in mind that if your business idea is a good one, an organization may want to hire you and invest in your business themselves. Right? So like I said the other day, that everybody is looking, if somebody give me a well-paying job, but the companies are looking for, hey, you young grads, come and solve our problems. So if you already come, Having identified a need and having a solution for it, you can kind of see that. And they may hire you to do what you like to do. Right? In some sense, what I am doing in Kalinochi is I'm, I'm very happy to do this. Right? And uh, because it meets a need, it's in line with my desires and my assets and uh, there is fulfillment. Okay, let's take a practice quiz. Which of the following is a mountainous need in society? In general, is this a big need? Okay. I ask this question for US American society, but let's say Sri Lankan society. Relevant education, is this a big need? So you want to think for a big need, you know, is, is the education system is the education relevant for the needs of Sri Lanka? About safety of citizens. Is that a big need? Freedom of the press. The press plays a key role. Are they truly free? All of the above. Take a minute to think. You, you, you are the guys who have to bring answers to the big needs in society. So if everybody starts thinking DNA, it's not only those who come to campus, everybody will be part of the solution. Answer to this is obvious, all of the above. Right? These are all big needs. And uh, um, Okay, if you have a question, write it down and then you would email it to me and reply all to everyone. Let's go to the fourth concept, accounting for entrepreneurs. Who is an entrepreneur? Because I'm basically encouraging you to be an entrepreneur. Even if, even if you are going to join an organization, you can go with the spirit of entrepreneurship. You can go with the solution to a problem that they have. That's an entrepreneurial spirit and that's what employees are looking for. So who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a person, he's a pioneer who has the drive and the ability to bring together human and financial resources to meet societal needs, usually by assuming a considerable amount of personal risk. You have to be that first person to step out. Everybody's like, oh, it can't be done, can't be done. You know, that's why I was telling yesterday an, an optimist sees an opportunity in every difficulty. Whereas a pessimist sees a difficulty in every opportunity. See, an entrepreneur is an optimist. He, he sees a need and he says, hey, we can solve this problem. He got that drive, he got that ability to bring together what is needed to meet societal needs and he's willing to take the risk. Sometimes he look like a fool, but he's all right. You know, maybe five things fail, the sixth thing he made it. Just one regiform cup, you make your million and that's it. After that, do whatever you like in life. When the motive is purely to meet a societal need, the pioneer is called a social entrepreneur. Such venture typically requires finding of donors. So I tend to be a social entrepreneur. I'm you know, trying to meet needs in not just in Sri Lanka, in other parts of the world, not necessarily with the money motive. It's, I'm happy because what I want at the end is lifelong happiness. 
right? So, so I will be considered a social entrepreneur, even the book, right? And I am generating the money and I am giving it to charities. Typically, uh, and a social entrepreneur will have to find donors to, to do this. But when the motive is also to make money for oneself, not just to meet a need, you make money and the pioneer will be called a business entrepreneur. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Be, be, a, be a business entrepreneur. Why does an entrepreneur need accounting? Right? We talked about financial accounting, managerial accounting. Now, why are we, what is this entrepreneurial talk now? An entrepreneur is an investor in his own business. He needs to come up with money. He needs to invest. He needs to get others to invest. So he seeks other investors in his business. So knowledge of financial accounting and the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, therefore will help him be effective in attracting capital to cover the startup costs. Okay. So, similarly, an entrepreneur is also a manager. He is not only he brings together resources, he has to manage resources. And therefore, the knowledge of managerial accounting will help him make efficient use of labor and other resources. So, an entrepreneurial context, therefore, is a great way to learn both financial and managerial accounting. Okay? So... It's a good thing. And let's come to a practice quest. Which of the following statements is not true? Entrepreneurs need accounting to make better decisions. Entrepreneurs need accounting to speak the language of business. Entrepreneurs need accounting to pay their taxes. Entrepreneurs need accounting to know their market. Which of the following statements is not true? Well, the correct answer is to know their market. You know, that's more than accounting, right? Is you, 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 you need to have knowledge of the market, but the rest... Accounting helps you make better decisions, speak the language of business, pay your taxes. Okay, so it's a D is the answer. Okay, and then, you know, end of Thursday, you got to submit two parts of your homework. From the first chapter is easy. You just review the executive summary of the sample business plan. So here you have our sample business plan. So here is the executive summary. So this is, I'll tell you more about this game specific t-shirts and caps. And uh, so an executive summary is what, you know, you're preparing this for an investor or a bank manager. And before they read your 30 page report, they, they just want to get a quick feel for hey, what is it that you're asking money for. So you talk about the market opportunity, you know, a need in the market, an opportunity. You know, you don't see the need as difficult. You see it as an opportunity to do something about it. So we are talking about that. Then the particular product or service that's in line with our DNA to, to meet that need. You talk about it. So here we have uh, game-specific T-shirts and caps are going to be what we offer. So this is what you would write, but you're not ready yet. So that's why I only wanted you to read it. And so you get an idea of where we are headed. Then you talk about the nature of the organization. How is your business organized? And we'll talk about corporations, partnerships, sole proprietorship and limited liability. Then you come to the NPV IRR analysis because this is the criteria to know how profitable a business is. So you're kind of talking about that and, and giving them some numbers or a bank manager or an angel investor would be, oh wow, your IRR is so much, your NPA, NPV is so much and that convinces them you have a good idea. Then the bottom line is you're appealing for funds. So you're, you're kind of telling 
how much money you need for your startup cost and and how much money you have and how much you can bring from your credit cards and how much you're going to borrow from a bank and what kind of collateral you're giving to a bank and then how much you're asking from angel investors who don't require any collateral but they require a much higher return and so and then we come to so there is actually nothing for you to do in that the then the homework 1.2 is you have an excel component and and the write up the excel component it's it's like this which we will do in the tutorial tomorrow is you know it just it's very easy for chapter 2 it gets it gets more detailed as we go later and here you would see the yellow space is what you need to fill so pretty straightforward we will do that and here you you start you tell what your first product or service in line with your dna and then tomorrow uh, during tutorial you will also start writing this thing and that's where i say one person be in charge of the write ups you're going to talk about your particular business idea the first product that we are starting with then how that's in line with your dna then who your competitors are you want to think about competition and now this is why it's important for you to employ your assets so when you bring your assets into play uh and then uh competition cannot uh, easily uh, beat you right for example uh in in the job as a faculty member in america uh we are free to do whatever we want in during summer breaks which is a solid 3 months from may 15th to august 15th so if i if i want to come and teach here I, i i don't need to even ask for permission from my university but that's not true for a professor in america or even canada or many other countries they have a 12 month contract so that certainly puts me in a unique position to can and then particularly when i am not looking to make money from this but to but lifelong happiness you see there is hardly any competition and uh, and so you, so you also that's why you want to be sensitized to your competition okay you may want to solve um some need there but there may be others uh, who are doing similar stuff and and so you need to be mindful of competition okay hope that was helpful so watch the video and